Welcome to my Wires Adventure Game Show Reel. This video will be covering the design and implementation of sounds using the Wires middleware and also other DAWs such as Logic and Pro Tools. The start of the project consisted of outsourcing sounds to use in the game. I started with creating an asset list. This gave me a good indication of the sounds I would need, also a good indication of sounds I could record or create myself. Using the Wires Game Profiler, I was able to put together an appropriate asset list using the event and object filters. Having a list then enabled me to go and source the sounds either from recording sounds myself or finding reputable sounds from the sound libraries. Sounds that needed recording included footsteps, adventurous vocals, bush sounds, water sounds and other sounds that may have been usable elsewhere in the game. For the footsteps, I recorded sounds outside on different terrains that were suitable for terrains in game such as grass, wood, stone. It was important to gather enough sounds with the differing velocities to emphasise the walking to the running velocities. As for recording the adventure sounds, this included recording my girlfriend, ensuring we got the different types of sounds required such as attacking, hurt and dying. The day in particular was not the greatest for recording footsteps, not ad-libs, and so this required me to clean up the sounds using plugins such as RX and some dynamic and equalisation manipulation that involved gating, boosting and cutting certain frequencies. It was important to record different velocity footsteps to represent walking and running in game. After cleaning up the sounds using logic and bouncing these out to appropriate folders, it was then possible to import sounds into Wise. Once the footsteps were recorded, cleaned and edited, and then imported into Wise, I was then able to set up the appropriate containers so that the sounds of each footstep were different for each foot, but also allowed me to set up each container of sounds for the appropriate surface the character was stepping on, such as grass, dirt, wood and stone. After setting up the folders and having the sounds imported to the correct folders, it was then time to link these to the events in the game. This would ensure that the game code would have synchronicity with the correct sounds when the event is happening in the game. Like I mentioned prior, the event's naming conventions are what work with the game's code, and therefore, what sounds are being triggered in the profiler when you run the game. Now moving over to the game syncs. Game syncs are used to manage specific changes in audio that relate to changes in action or conditions within the game. In this game, for example, there are different surfaces or materials, and so having a materials game sync allows for the wires to understand different ground textures in the game. Once set up, this game sync should be linked to the appropriate switch that we created earlier. Linking this in the contents editor with the correct assigned object at the side, such as wood. Whilst inside the switch containers property editor, it was then possible to further modify certain switch containers using pitch randomization to add on top of the folder randomization in the random container that would allow for more choice of sounds. This is especially helpful if you are limited to only using a few sounds to get more sounds out of them. Share sets are a form of preset that allow you to apply various types of settings that you intend to use often or on multiple objects. They can be used to add reverb to sounds when in a specific area and therefore is what I use to factor in the different areas of the map such as the cave or outside. Applying the appropriate effects to the area type is important and even adding impulse response reverbs to truly get an authentic reverb sound for that type of area. The share sets can then be assigned to the appropriate sound using the objects tab in the sound property editor. Ensuring that each sound has its own dedicated DSP processing allows for customizability that may require processing from another area such as a corridor reverb pre-delay similar to an outdoor reverb for example. For the enemies, it was important to get the mix right for threatening and suitability for the character. Using the asset list enabled me to go and source the right sounds. For the evil spit plant, I needed to decide what sounds I would design myself and what sounds I could source elsewhere. I made sure to firstly set up a folder hierarchy in accordance with what sounds I would need and this made it easier for me to decide how I would approach layering and recording sounds. For the plant shoot sounds, I decided to compile a number of sounds to test, some that worked and some that did not. A number of pistol sounds mixed with sci-fi gun sounds seemed to work, and I was happy with how it ended up sounding. 
for the plant dying and being hurt. I used my own voice to emphasize certain sounds and stylize them to how I thought the character would sound pre-processed. For the processing, I used Krotos Simple Monsters plugin. I used this to stylize and experiment with the sounds and design it suitably for the character. As for the other sounds of the plant dying, it was important to gather suitable sounds. And so, using sounds such as vegetables and other impact stops allowed me to get the appropriate sounds for the monster hitting the ground. Other sounds, such as the charge of the bullet, were designed using household items such as an air pump and other compressed air items, and then processed to add more fullness to the sound. The shooting sound was created using a mixture of different gun sounds, such as a rifle, pistol, and sci-fi sounds. Other enemies in the game, such as the evil head, have similar approaches in the way the sounds are created, although stylized to suit the character in game. This character is a rock type enemy, and so it was suitable to keep this theme and including rock type sounds upon its death. I experimented with different drone sounds as a monster is floating. And also used my own voice for the attacks, bites, and death sounds. I used the 3D space emitters in the game to apply my own real-time parameter controls to. The parameters were applied to most 3D emitters and would give a sense of distance between the player and sound using controls such as low-pass filters, volume adjustments and equalization to gauge distance and real-world variables that were applicable in the game scenario, such as a low-pass filter to determine distance from an object such as the waterfall. When it came to backgrounds, I went and recorded a bunch of ambiences outside. The area where I live is not forgiving when it comes to noise pollution, and so I ended up using samples elsewhere to get the best bet of quality sounds that were suitable. For the music, I wanted a theme that was suitable for each area of the map. For the woodlands, I wanted a balance of upbeat, adventure themes and a moderate tempo to keep things in style. For the cave, I wanted a juxtaposed style of slow and eerie that is similar to the night music, but the cave has more dissonant sounds that work well in making the player feel uncomfortable. Whilst in night music, you feel more at ease, making use of slow tempos, and is overall quite relaxing. Making the music in Logic, I was able to use plugins such as Alchemist to gather sounds that suit the area, and play with different melodies to get the right sounds. I created the main theme still in Logic, making use of the other samples and arrangements. I was able to put together something I felt suited the style of the game and I'm happy with the outcome.
And this brings me to the end of my Wise Adventure Game Showreel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.